I am at a very purple place today. I am at Lavender Lake Farms with Rhonda. And Rhonda, where is the farm? The farm is located north of Monmouth and south of Rick Real on Highway 99W. Uh, and when I got out of the car today, you could just smell that fragrance. It's really intoxicating. It is. We have a lot of people come in and they take a lot of time and they roam through our fields, take pictures. Anyone is welcome to walk around the farm and we are dog friendly. You can bring your dogs out as long as they're on a leash. And um, you're welcome to come and take any pictures you'd like. Oh. Oh, and it really is a photo op, so when you come, you got to bring the, the camera. And this time of year, it's all in bloom, and so if you can just give some tips for us at home, how it, what are some good tips for us to grow lavender successfully? So it needs full sun, mm. a lot of sun. Partial shade doesn't do that well. <laughs> um, it also needs to be on a mound, because mm. we get a lot of rain, and the water needs to be able to run away from the base of the plant. Um, so those are the two most important things. Lavender doesn't really like fertilizer, so it's important only only to use a really light type of fertilizer once a year. Ah. So Rhonda, you know, people are so nervous about trimming plants, and I think lavender in particular, but really to trim it, you get to play with it and make great projects. Right. There's um, a, several times you'll want to trim your, your lavender plant. Actually, um, in the fall is the best time to prepare it for winter mm -hmm. and also to get it nice and strong to come out in the spring. And in the fall, we actually trim ours and shape them into a ball, and we give people the guideline of about three inches of green left on your plant. Um, the other times, if you do want to get the flowers off the plant for projects such as wreaths or wands, you'll want to get them right before they open up. So right before you see the buds start popping, that's the best time to use them. Ah, and so what is this variety that Melissa's working on with this, this wreath? Is, this is called Grosso, and it's a French lavender. And um, this is really popular for wreaths and wands. Uh, and I noticed that they are fresh, because I would think, oh, we'd want to do it dry, but it's interesting that she's working with fresh flowers. Right, it's a lot easier. We actually have to wind the um, wire around the base and get it nice and tight, and if you do that with a dried stem, it breaks. Oh, sure. So sure. we do it as it's fresh, and then we actually dry them in a drying room. Oh, so that's yeah. interesting. So at home, could we just put it out maybe on a table out of the sun or something? Yeah, you'd want it in a dark room. Um, dark is best because that keeps the color in the blooms, um, sometimes in a garage, back away, um, out, just kind of where the um, humidity might be low. Hmm. Yeah. Great tip. Rhonda, you said that Melissa is using the Grosso, so can you tell us a couple steps so that we can maybe follow along with what sure. she's working on? Yeah, we actually um, use 30 stems per bundle if we're doing a Grosso variety wreath. And so um, Melissa will count out 30 stems and then we'll cut it fairly short. You can see the stem isn't real long and we'll lay them on top of each other and wrap them tightly with the wire. Ah. And can you do that with other varieties, or is this really the best? Yes, you can. Um, we actually use our Buena Vista um, and our Amy Roberts to make another type of wreath. Uh, and those are really special to the family here, Right. those varieties. Yeah, those two varieties um, my dad developed. He developed Buena Vista, Amy Roberts, Sharon Roberts, and Eola are some varieties that are out on the market today. We also have a couple other varieties that we haven't released yet. Uh, and Sharon Roberts is your mom, so that's really right. that's really special. And it she's is. running around here too, so that's really great. And this is also a special time because there's a festival going on. Right, our festival is always the second weekend in July. Um, during the festival, we have our U Cut fields open. Um, they're also open anytime when we start blooming. Um, during the festival, you can come in U Cut. We have vendors here, um, lots of vendors. We have food. You can taste lavender and food. We'll have lavender ice cream, lavender lemonade, um, and we also have some other uh, culinary vendors out here as well. We have live music and we do classes. If you'd like to learn how to make a wreath or a wand, we have those available during the festival weekend as well. Uh, really so much going on here and the shop is really great. You have so many items here. So if you have any other questions, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over their website and you can find out all the details and how to get out here to Lavender Lake Farms. Thank you so much.